Our greatest primary task is to put people to work. This is no unsolvable problem if we face it wisely and courageously. Before the New Deal, American workers had little power. Employers set wages as low as they wished. Pensions and other benefits were rare. Workplace safety was poor and child labor widespread. Unions had only limited legal protection. Workers who tried to organize faced intimidation, firing, and even violence. FDR changed this balance of power. In 1933, the National Industrial Recovery Act had guaranteed labor's right to organize and bargain collectively. In addition, FDR signed the Wagner Act, the most important labor law in American history. We must continue to protect children, to enforce minimum wages, to prevent excessive hours, to safeguard, to find and enforce collective bargaining. The act affirmed the right of workers to organize unions, required employers to bargain with union representatives, and enhanced the power of the National Labor Relations Board to mediate disputes. Union organizers swiftly capitalized on these laws. Between 1930 and 1945, the percentage of unionized workers jumped from 7% to nearly 34%. Organized labor became a major economic force and a powerful ally of FDR's Democratic Party. In 1938, New Dealers enacted a second landmark labor law. Its goal, in FDR's words, was to end starvation wages and intolerable hours. The Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 established a national minimum wage, a 40-hour week for workers in industry, and prohibited employment of children under the age of 16 in most occupations. Maybe the most singular thing about the New Deal was the way in the middle of a giant world depression, it accommodated millions of striking workers and actually changed the legal framework to make collective bargaining possible. 